Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas. Today's surf tip is on the front side roundhouse cutback. It's one of my favorite maneuvers and I wanna let you guys into my process. I'm always trying to better my own technique. It's the way I approach a wave. It's about repetition, how many times I get to do the maneuver and then how I attack the wave to maximize drive through the cutback and then execute the rebound getting as vertical as possible. Now, if you follow the show, I'm a huge fan of repetition, so there's no sacrifice for water time. However, I love these slide surf skates and I've been messing with them a bunch. They feel most like surfing to me. I get out here, I skate the curbs, I'm looking for that drive. I wanna perfect my own technique from rail to rail and I'm gonna let you in on that. I'm riding different boards with different wheels for different purposes. This is gonna be fun. Sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. This is my wave right here this little, I don't know, shin high transition. So I'm gonna get some speed and I'm gonna come into this right here. I'm gonna make a bottom turn. And then as I come up into this section right here, I would say this is the top of the wave. And I start to cut back. I'm gonna utilize the energy at the height of the wave to compress down into my cutback. I also started the cutback with looking back at where the power source is. Guys, this is one of the most important things is if we're gonna choose a maneuver and we're gonna work on it, we've gotta deli be deliberate on committing to that maneuver and that's head first, then it opens the shoulders and hips. It's gonna enable me to come around, hit the transition and then rebound right here. One of the things that I've been working on is it's really about how deep the bottom turn is and then where I actually start the cutback on the wave face and it feels like if i come up higher i can gain more speed as i come around but there's something about the way i set the heel side rail and then as i'm coming down and i'm holding that turn where i come at it at the bottom will enable me to get the maximum pivot or verticalness on the rebound so the first place i want to start is when i come into this turn I talk about in my tutorials is putting the weight back on the back leg, roughly 70% and 30 on the front to initiate the cutback. Now I wanna take it a step further. I wanna talk about heel toe pressure. And this isn't something I've talked about much, but it's super important. To engage the rail, not only do I want my weight to start 70 on the back and 30 on the front, I also wanna have 70% of the weight on my heels to engage the rail, right? So now it's 70% to get the board to tilt like this with my heels. And then I'm digging my back leg into the water and I'm pushing. And then as I'm driving through the turn, I'm actually shifting my weight forward and my trailing arm is coming around. And as I come in here, I'm still on the hillside rail holding it the entire time. And then as I come in here and I'm getting closer to the power source, you're gonna see that most of my weight has shifted to like 70% on my front leg and 30 on the back, but the heel side rail is still engaged, okay? And then when I get here, there's this pivot in transition where I'm actually snapping and turning back and trying to set the toe side rail. So coming into here and coming into this transition I've got 70% of my weight, not only back, shifted back to get that pivot and rotation, I've actually turned 70% of my weight on my toes compared to the middle of my foot. So when I go to the toes, it's gonna tilt the board over like this. And that's the whole thing. I talk about getting a board to roll over, we get that through heel toe pressure. So when I come into here, I've got all my weight back and I'm sitting back on the back leg and I've got a lot of toe pressure on the board furthest on the toe side rail. So this is one of the things that's super important. I'm learning that as I come around and it depends on how low I take it of a cutback into the trough of the wave or the bottom of the wave, when I come back up into the lip, that will enable me to get more vertical. Think about it, if I come in high and I stay at the middle of the wave, I can really only go so vertical on the return or rebound. 
So to take it down a little bit lower and come further out here makes me be able to come from the bottom of the wave and really square it up and then pivot and turn. So I wanna get a little bit of speed, make it most like surfing. I'm gonna come bottom turn, come up to the top of the wave, hold it, rebound and ride out. Now I've got three different slide skateboards. They all look very similar, but I wanna point out the differences. This is the slide hot buttered Martin's classic. It's 31 inches in length and it's 10 and a half inches wide and it has a more uh, high performance wheel. It's a little bit smaller. So with it being a little bit smaller, you're gonna have less rubber on the concrete and, and this is gonna offer a little bit more performance. So it's gonna feel looser and slide a little bit easier. And then this is the Gussie C Psychedelic. 31 inches in length, same wheelbase, same trucks. It has different wheels and this one's 10 and a quarter wide. And it's the same deck as the Gussie Spoon that I've been riding. But what makes these two a little bit different than this, besides this being a quarter inch narrower, is the wheels. And the wheels make all the difference in the world. This is a wider wheel. And with more rubber on the concrete, it's giving me more traction, more hold. And when I push, as I go into these turns, I have more traction and that's giving me more speed with less effort. Let's get a few runs. And then you, I hope you guys can see what I'm feeling. Now starting with the Gussie C Psychedelic with the wider wheels, it just seemed like when I hit my top to bottom on the curb, it really felt like I didn't have to work very hard. It had the traction and the hold. And because it has that traction I push, it's squirting with speed. Now coming into this um, cutback, it had the drive and the hold. And I felt like as I came into the rebound, it had the traction, but it wanted to make a, like a more round turn. It didn't want to get up and be a little bit more vertical. It didn't pivot as fast as this one. Now, when I talk about coming up my little wave here on the concrete, I had to work a lot harder on pumping. It still had traction, but just less rubber. I could feel the narrow wheel. I had to pump more often, and it kind of felt like a pivot fin, if I could describe it best. But when I came in here, I was fine on the cutback, but when I got to the rebound, that's when I felt like I was hitting it. It was doing a little bit more of a progressive turn and the wheels were kind of sliding. So this has definitely got a more high performance feel, a little bit quicker pivot. And this has a little bit more smoother, drawn out and drivey feel. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's surf tip on the front side roundhouse cutback. Repetition's key, whether you're in the pool, on land or in the ocean, you want the right tools to achieve what you're personally looking for. So getting the right board, the right fins, or being on the right surf skate with the right wheels to achieve this particular thing in this maneuver. Whether it's drive through the turn or vertical on the rebound, it all matters. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.